I'm Dr. R. Scott Wright, a professor of medicine and cardiology at Mayo Clinic in the United States. I was principal investigator of the Orion 10 trial and a member of the Orion Executive Steering Committee. Today, on behalf of Professor Cossack Ray and Professor Derek Rao, I'm able, able and delighted to talk about the pooled analysis of all of the phase three trials of Inclisiran across the entirety of the Orion Worldwide Program. The Orion program is testing whether a new treatment for elevated cholesterol is effective and safe. The current study was done as a planned analysis of the entirety of the phase three program of Inclisiran. We presented and published three large phase three treatment studies last year. All were randomized placebo controlled studies comparing inclisiran against placebo in patients who were on maximally tolerated oral lipid lowering therapies. 92% were on statins. Uh, of the, those on statins, three out of four were taking high dose, high intensity statins. And about 13% of patients were taking azetamibe and a small percent, three or four were not on any oral therapy because they had muscle symptoms or other signs of intolerance. The three groups that we examined as part of individual trials were patients with familial hypercholesterolemia in the Orion 9 trial, patients with cardi atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease in the Orion 10 study, and patients with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or risk equivalents in the Orion 11 study. Orion 9 was led by a principal investigator from uh, South Africa, and the study was conducted in South Africa, the Middle East, and Europe. Orion 10 was led by myself and, Orion, and conducted in the United States exclusively. And Orion 11 was led by Professor Ray from London and conducted in Great Britain and in a few European countries. But we knew that the individual studies would have much more power if we pre-specified a planned pooled analysis. So the combined analysis is the latest data that I presented at the American College of Cardiology meeting last week in Chicago. Inclisiran is a double-stranded RNA that's a sort of a new and novel treatment for treating elevated cholesterol. It's taken up by the body and is taken directly to the liver cell because it has an attached galneck complex, a sugar moiety called galneck that allows it to be delivered to the hepatocyte. And once it's taken into the hepatocyte, it uses the body's natural process of silencing the translation of message RNA through the RISC complex and it inhibits the translation of message RNA for PCSK9, resulting in substantial reductions in the synthesis of the PCSK9 protein so that circulating levels of PCSK9 fall precipitously and um, the levels of LDL also fall. So it works that way. It's given on average twice a year, as opposed to the more recently developed monoclonal antibodies, which are typically given 26 times a year and we've tested inclisiran largely, not exclusively, but largely in patients already on daily oral lipid lowering therapies. But it's also been tested in patients who have not taken any lipid therapy and shown to be equally effective uh, as in those taking a statin or a statin with another oral agent like azetamide. Uh, the study design is randomizing patients uh, on day one to either receive an injection of placebo or inclisiran. Then, they then receive the subcutaneous injections of 1.5 cc's on days one and 90, and then every six months thereafter. They've had to be on a stable dose of oral, maximally tolerated oral lipid therapies and have an entry LDL of greater than 70 in those with ASCVD, uh, greater than 100 in those with risk equivalence or FH. And then we follow them and do periodic blood measures over a total of 18 months. The co-primary endpoints of the trial looked at the efficacy of LDL lowering at day 510 com in glycerin compared to placebo, and also the time average reduction or change in LDL of glycerin versus placebo. Because one could imagine that if you're giving a drug infrequently, you wanna make sure it's working across time and not just at pre-specified time points where you measure. So we looked at time average reductions. In addition, 
uh, after the design of the trial and, and the initiation, elegant work from Brian Ferenc in Cambridge was published showing that really time average reductions of LDL over decades is probably the best predictor of secondary prevention benefits. So we feel very uh, uh, delighted that our co-primary endpoint has been you know, corroborated as an important endpoint by the work of Professor Ferenc. Yeah, the patients were either those with heterozygous FH and Orion 9, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which was ischemic heart disease, you know, coronary heart disease, peripheral arterial disease, or cerebral vascular disease in Orion 10 and 11, or those who had risk equivalents equivalent to ASCVD were about 20% of the patients in Orion 11. So those were the patients. Um, there were, you know, mainly men in the study, as I recall. Uh, we had 68% uh, were men, so two out of three were men. Uh, a little over a third were type two diabetics, 35%. Uh, and the baseline LDL at the time of randomization was 111 in the placebo group and 112 in the treatment group. So despite you know on maximally tolerated oral therapy, they still had fairly high LDLs. Median age was 65 in both groups and about 44% were from the United States and the remainder were from the rest of the world. So those those were the that was the patient population as an aggregate. At day five ten, uh, inclisiran compared to placebo reduced LDL by fifty five percent, and a time average reduction from days ninety to five forty showed a fifty two percent reduction in LDL. Both of these were highly statistically significant. So once the drug is approved, presuming and hopefully that it is approved this year by the regulatory authorities. Doctors are asking, if we use Inclusiran, what percent of my patients will get to an LDL threshold? So we took high-risk patients, you know, heterozygous FH and patients with ASCVD or their risk equivalents. So many of them now have treatment-based guideline thresholds of 70 or lower. So we know from the study that 76% of patients on Inclusiran and only 14% on placebo achieved an LDL of less than 70 on treatment. And 58% achieved an LDL of less than 50 versus 2% on placebo. So Inclusiran was quite effective at achieving not only potent reductions in LDL, but also achieving uh, certain LDL thresholds. Some clinicians worry that taking LDL too low could be problematic. And we looked at what percent of patients achieved an LDL of less than 25 milligrams per deciliter, and that was 16% in the Inclusiran group and 0.3% in the placebo arm. We've often have been asked too, you know, what were the secondary endpoints? So PCSK9 was reduced by 83% Inclusiran versus placebo, total cholesterol 32%, non-HDL, the total atherogenic burden 46%, ApoB 42%, and lipoprotein A was reduced 20%. And all of the secondary endpoints were highly statistically significant, as were the co-primary endpoints. We did forest plot analyses as well, looking at effects of various factors and looking for heterogeneity. So there were no differences between sex. So men and women had equally efficacious LDL lowering. Age was not an issue. Uh, those under 65, those over 65 had similar efficacy. The same was true for an age threshold of 75 or lower. Race was not an issue. Uh, the use of uh, oral therapy or not on a statin, not on a statin did not affect the efficacy of results. And uh, the meta presence of a metabolic issue like diabetes or metabolic syndrome showed no attenuation or enhancement of efficacy. It was comparable to what we saw for those who had no metabolic abnormalities. So we feel fairly comfortable saying that the efficacy uh, is robust and uh, durable uh, as well as quite potent. I think with a new drug and a new class, it's important to look at safety. And we looked at treatment uh, emergent adverse events, and they were comparable between the groups. There were no differences at all, except uh, for injection site reactions. Uh, and there were about 5% of patients on inclisiran and 1% on placebo had some mild or moderate erythema or pruritus, uh, itching or a rash, slight rash uh, of a small diameter that tended to go away after a few days and did not recur if they received further uh, injections as, as they did. Uh, there were no differences in elevations of liver enzyme test or CK 
or creatinines above two or platelet counts less than 75,000. These were pre-specified blood markers we looked at. So no differences between placebo and glycerin. The overall mortality was no different. Uh, it was one and a half percent in both arms, placebo and glycerin. Uh, the rates of cancer were the same. Uh, the, the rates of new or worsening or recurrent malignancies were comparable. And drug discontinuation was quite low. It was less than 2.5% in both groups. Uh, we also did an exploratory endpoint, which uh, looked at a MEDRA basket of major adverse cardiovascular events, cardiovascular death, resuscitated cardiac arrest, non-fatal myocardial infarction, and hemorrhagic or ischemic stroke. And we used the MEDRA terms that the European Medicines Authority, the British authorities, and the US FDA agreed were the proper terms. And we saw a pre-specified CV MACE rate of 9.4% in the placebo group and 7.1% in the inclycerin group. So there was you know, fewer events in the inclycerin group. We're not drawing any firm conclusions about that, except to say that the trend was in the correct direction as far as we are concerned. It showed a benefit, but it can't be statistically uh, derived because it's uh, associational, uh, because the study was not powered you know, for a pure outcomes thing. And we are currently uh, conducting a phase three outcomes trial uh, through the group at Oxford, Professor Collins and colleagues, uh, called Orion 4. And so we're relying on that trial to give us the total adverse uh, and outcomes events on that. So those are the data and the results. I think there are several. One, that the drug is potent and durable. So giving it infrequently, roughly every six months, shows very robust lowering of LDL. That's also durable with 55% reductions at day 510 and a 52% time average reduction over days 90 to 540. Second, that it's safe compared to placebo. There were no signals of any safety concerns or issues. Uh, the, the design of the trial uh, gives us a lot of experience now with using inclisiran, pooling the data gives us a lot of patient years to look at. All of the data that you heard me describe now and that you've seen at ACC are submitted to the regulatory authorities in the United Kingdom uh, and in Europe and in the United States. So they have the full picture, but we've been as transparent as we know to be and can be with the data. We have not seen any signal. So it's safe, it's durable, it's effective. We also think it's novel. And finally, we think it's a practical way to help patients further lower LDL and stay on treatment that will keep their LDL low. So giving something twice a year assures that if a patient misses a dose of a statin or misses a week of a statin, the inclycerin is there to sort of help them and hold them down. It's not that we're recommending people skip medicines, but the reality of clinical practice is that most patients uh, skip medicines. And unfortunately, data show that 50 to 60% of patients on statins are non-compliant after a year, even those who've had serious life-threatening events like a myocardial infarction or a stroke. So we need medicines that are effective, durable, and that can help improve adherence. So we believe that inclycerin offers all of those and are optimistic that clinicians will uh, find it that way once it's approved and available for uh, use commercially.